Hey everybody, this is Matt Golson from Gamers Cast, and I've been meaning to make this video for quite a while now, and I know it's a little bit after launch, it's like a couple months after the launch of the PlayStation 4, and then I figured, you know what, I waited too long, there's no point in making this video. Then I looked online, and every retailer ever is still basically sold out of these things. And to me, it doesn't really make all that much sense on why they're sold out of these things. I mean, I, I get it. It's the quickest selling console in history. The, the damn things might have outsold the Wii U already, which is funny because last time a console had a one year head start on Sony, it took them five to catch up, but I digress. The Sony PlayStation 4, it's a really interesting thing to make an opinion on because I'm really split on whether normal consumers should buy it or not. Um, and by that I mean I kind of feel like most consumers shouldn't buy it right now. But in the long run, I do think the PlayStation 4 will be a great console to own. But as for right now, I don't think it's worth it. And then you're probably thinking, okay, then I might as well invest in it now for the long run. Well, the thing about it is, Sony has never, not once, released a system that has that has not had a redesign within about two years of coming out. PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3 had three redesigns, PSP and PS Vita. Every system they've come out with has had a redesign. So, as it stands now, let's look at the games that are out for PlayStation 4. Exclusives wise, it's pretty thin. Um, you have Knack, and you have something like Resogun. Resogun is a fun game and all, but, I mean, if you really like your twin-stick shooters, Geometry Wars will more than suffice for the time being. Uh, I've also seen another argument online about why you should get a PlayStation 4. It was like, oh, well, I have PlayStation Plus, so if I don't get a PlayStation 4 now, I'll miss out on the free games. That's actually not true. If you go to SonyEntertainmentNetwork.com and you have PlayStation Plus, you can redeem the free PS Plus games for now, so that way when you get the system later, you'll have a huge backlog. That's what I did with the PS Vita. So then by the time I got the Vita, I have like 20 games to play on the thing. But as for getting a PlayStation 4 now, there's really nothing, nothing, nothing on it that's worthwhile. And if you're saying, let's wait for Infamous, because Infamous is coming out in something like March. That's really, really close. Obviously, there's not going to be a console redesign before March, given that this thing just came out. Thing is, if you're basing your entire opinion on whether to get a console off of one game, it kind of seems a little foolish to me, which is the same reason I don't believe in pre-orders, because with a pre-order and getting a console just for one game that hasn't come out yet, you're putting all of your confidence in that that one game is going to be good. Now what happens if Infamous comes out and it's a flop? Now you're stuck with a system that with nothing to play on it and a game that sucks. Nobody wants that. And to be honest, the PlayStation 4, comparatively right now, feature-wise, compared to the PS3, it's a little limited. Um, not all the accessories work. Um, HDCP is enabled, just like on the PS3. Um, they said they're going to put out a firmware update to get rid of that. There's no media servers. There's a lot of apps missing that the PS3 has so far. Uh, it's honestly a very hard sell at the moment. In fact, the reason Sony said that the thing it didn't come out in Japan yet is because they said, well, if we released it there, no one would have bought it because there's nothing else, nothing out that anyone over there would have wanted. So they didn't release it yet. Um, the PlayStation 3 is still having first-party titles pushed out for it. Sony said they were going to continue to do so through 2016. And by that point, there more than likely will be... A PlayStation 4 redesign. And the thing is with redesigns, yeah, we you can speculate all you want, but we don't really know what the difference will be. Um, probably a bigger hard drive, it might be quieter, it might be smaller, you, you don't know with these sort of things. And 
it just seems like a bit of a fool's errand to just dive in on the PlayStation 4. Like, I did it solely for the purpose of reporting it and telling you guys. And just... And right now, the way YouTube th and all those things are going, I'm not getting the return on it, my YouTube channel that I used to, and there go, I'm kind of a bit regretting the fact that I bought a PlayStation 4, as sad as that is to say. I love the thing, I love that I can remotely play it with my Vita, and I know I will love it, but the thing is, my PlayStation 3, even now, is still getting a lot of mileage out of it. Lots of people say, it's like, why are you playing your PS3 when you have a PS4? It's like, there's nothing to play on the PS4. PlayStation 1 classics don't work, and, and there's a chance they might not even work, just because of um, the whole PlayStation Now thing that Sony's pushing, and we don't know how that's going to work, so will the PlayStation 4 support local emulation of PS1 and PS2 games? There's a chance it might not, just because of this. I mean, right now, you buy one PlayStation 1 game, it works on your PSP, your PS Vita, and your PS3, with cross saves across all three. PS4 doesn't have that right now. PS4 doesn't have a lot going for it right now. So, I think if you've been waiting all this time to buy a PlayStation 4, I think you really need to reevaluate why you want it. Most games are coming out for both systems right now anyway, this gen and last gen. So, something like Assassin's... The only game I'm really playing on my PlayStation 4 is Assassin's Creed 4, and I just as easily could have got it for my, play for my PC, which ergo would have been a superior version to get. Why did I buy it on PlayStation 4? Because I actually have something to play on my PlayStation 4. And that's really the sad truth of it. The PlayStation 4, long run, it looks like it's going to be a phenomenal machine. As for launch titles, the Xbox One is definitely superior with things like Dead Rising and Rise, Son of Rome. But the thing is, a console is a long-term investment so you shouldn't be basing it off of the now and the here and now. Honestly, who knows if games way down towards the end of the PS4's life cycle will push the PS4 to the limit when the earlier models start breaking, like we've been seeing with GTA V and the early 360s. It very well could happen. So that is why I mainly wanted to make this video. Honestly, there are more than enough games coming out for last gen. Some games are still only coming out for last gen. And if you were an Xbox guy moving over to the PlayStation side, it's still not time yet. I mean, yes, I agree the PlayStation 4 will be superior just from the variety, the sheer variety of games that come out on that platform as opposed to the Xbox, especially considering exclusives and such. The, I definitely feel siding with PlayStation is the way to go at this point. I flip-flopped before, but as of now, it appears that PlayStation is going to be the more diverse side and appears to be the most bang for your buck. The console's cheaper, PlayStation Plus is cheaper, and you get free games that are relatively recent for free, as long as you have PlayStation Plus. The thing is, there aren't really that many games to release for free right now on PlayStation Plus. Yeah, I, I guarantee you, sooner or later, Knack is probably going to be a PS Plus game for free. There's a lot of games for PS Plus. So, what I recommend, if you're really concerned about the free games, is to get a PS Plus subscription and just keep hitting purchase for all the PS4 Plus games that come out. So that way, when you get your PS4 finally, you'll have this giant backlog of games that you'll be able and ready to play right out of the box. Whereas now, there aren't all that many. I realize the temptation of a new system is pretty immense. But the thing is, you've got to think logically about these things. This console is a huge investment. A huge investment. $400 ain't something to just laugh at. It's a, it's a lot of money. And $500 for an Xbox One, even more money. Uh, so, I would definitely wait at least another year to see how things ride out. Unless you're really in, unless Infamous comes out and is absolutely spectacular, and you're a huge Infamous fan, and you really want to play Infamous for whatever reason, then by all means get a PlayStation 4 then. But right now, when there's no real incentive to, I just do not see the point. Because, I mean, mine, it's basically just sitting around. Once I finish Assassin's Creed, it's been collecting dust. 
And that's really sad to say, but it's true. I've been playing my PlayStation 3 infinitely more, and my PC more than that. So, that is my take on the state of the PlayStation 4. So, to answer the question that is so kindly laid out in the title of this video, should you buy a PlayStation 4 now? No! Absolutely not! Check back with me in three months after Infamous comes out, and then check back with me at the end of this year once Destiny comes out and the beta is out and all these other games are starting to come out for the system. Check back with me then. Then I'll give you a better opinion on the matter and we'll have some sort of idea on how these console wars are shaping out. But as for right now, it's really just a time will tell type of mystery thing. So I would just stick with the last gen for the time being. I've been Matt Golden from Gamerscast. You can check out more over at GamersCast.com. I will catch you guys next time.